I've been making comics with the new generative AI software, and I put a video all about it on my new channel for long form video essays. You can check that out in the link below. I do have some concerns about the ethics of AI generated content, but I can also see the value of AI art for science communication. As an example, I made this comic about scientific method as performed by me in the lab. The way it usually goes is not so much hypothesis, experiment, analyze, report. My silly take on the real experience is more like realize you've made a mistake, plan a revision, run the experiment again, and then weep. Maybe it amounts to the same thing, I'm not sure. Peter Allen Lab channel is going to continue to be my vlog where I'm going to post sciencey things that pique my interest, things I've made, things I like. Uh, if you're here for the battery project, I'm afraid I don't work very much on that anymore. I left it in the capable hands of my former graduate student Deepak. When he publishes his paper, I will definitely link and promote it here. In the meantime, this vlog is going to be more informal, just the kind of things I like, and I have a bunch of things to share this week. There's a Conspirituality podcast. I find the whole podcast really interesting, but this week's was especially good. The Spirituality of Vaccine and Mask Panics. Uh, it's a great episode of a good podcast that looked at why exactly people get so weird about being asked to wear a mask. A big fraction of people who were infected with SARS-CoV-2 never showed symptoms, but they were still spreading the virus, and indeed still are. That should be front and center information conveyed to the public, but the incoherent messaging on this issue was one of many unforced failures of the former administration, whose name will not be mentioned. I used to have some hope that if the information had been presented better, there would have been less fuss about masks, but this peak makes me feel naive for even thinking that. There is some weird superstitious belief systems at work here. The Library of Alexandra. This is a radio program on the history of Sci-Hub and a rare interview with the founder Alexandra Elbekian. Sci-Hub was a critical source for scientific papers, uh, for people who were uh, cut off from an institutional access point. Um, most people get access to scientific papers through a research university, but if they don't happen to be affiliated with that, or if they're affiliated with a foreign institution that doesn't have enough money to pay subscription fees, or at a poor university like I was, then uh, in some cases it's a way to get a hold of scientific papers. It's illegal. I won't say I used it, but it does exist, or at least it did. Apparently they're not updating right now because they're litigating in India. Another New Yorker piece I enjoyed is how Christian is Christian nationalism. It's this exploration of the idea that Christian in this sense means more like a heritage than a moral or spiritual practice. Christian nationalism is dangerous. It has very little to do with kindness, forgiveness, and brotherly love, and has a lot to do with being a member of a certain in-group. White, prudish, pious, at least in public, patriotic, at least in public, and affluent. It's gross, and I hate it. But the article is great. You Must Believe You Can Repair It, a tale of an ancient RV and the family who restored it and lived in it. The theme is anything that is worth repairing can be repaired. I've worked on some antique vehicles before, and I am impressed by the gumption of someone who lives in one. It's no secret that I love the culture in M. Banks's brilliant science fiction series. Uh, there's a post I'll link to in the description called The Culture War, Ian M. Banks's billionaire fans. Culture is a thought experiment post-scarcity, so if you haven't read it, there are minds, AIs, that will generate anything you want, physically, for free, for everyone. There's no money, there's no scarcity, everyone just lives in harmony and has big orgies all the time. It's great, it's a fun series. Uh, where it gets really interesting is how this culture interacts with less advanced civilizations. Should they intervene? Must they intervene morally? Anyway, uh, it's weird that a bunch of billionaires really love this, because it's basically space communism, and yet, in some sense, rich people are sort of the only people on Earth living the life offered by the culture. So it's, it's a strange dichotomy, a strange internal tension, and this article explores it. The Mystery for the Future is a book by Kim Stanley Robinson. I highly recommend it. I finished it recently. Impressively hopeful. There's a quote that it's easier to imagine the end of the world than it is to imagine the end of capitalism. And this book does not go so far as to imagine an end to capitalism, but maybe a moderation of capitalism in human interest, and presents a sort of realistic way that we might get there. Uh, three things happen in the book that are 
not likely today, but are sadly getting more likely every day. There's a heat wave that kills a million people in one city all at once, a widespread eco-terrorism spree and sabotage that disrupts the economy, and finally, a bunch of central banks take climate change seriously as a threat to the whole economic system, and then actually act on that understanding. So these are, again, not likely, but a a really careful examination of these possibilities was really welcome and ultimately pretty hopeful. So anyhow, that's a bunch of stuff I've been reading that I've enjoyed lately. I will be trying to post more of these shorts and link blogs. They're also available on my website, peterallenlab.com, where you can also find the links to newer long form videos, as well as an audio version of these essays, both short and long. So I hope you'll tune in next time. This has been Peter Allen for The Allen Lab.